Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Hey, it's a little chilly in here. I need you guys to, to heat up the atmosphere. I said good morning, church. How are you? Awesome. I am excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, thankful. You know, we, we celebrated Thanksgiving this week. And um, while it was a, a bittersweet Thanksgiving, I got to tell you, I just thank God for who he is. I thank him for the faithfulness in my life, even through uh, tragedy, even through hurt, knowing God is with us. God has been with us. You know, this, is, this was the, the first Thanksgiving for me since my father passed. And I, I was outside cooking in the morning, and I remember I just started thanking God. I was reflecting and thankful for the example that I had. Thankful for a man that poured into our lives, that loved hard, that was committed, you know. And it was, it was God's faithfulness through my father to me, to my, my sisters, my family, to this ministry. And so even in the, the sorrow, I was able to say, thank you, God, because you have been faithful. Amen. So this morning, uh, as we get ready to worship God, um, I just want you to just open your heart to the greatness of the God that we serve and recognize that today, acknowledge that today. And let him do whatever it is he wants to do in your life. Are we ready? Hallelujah. The song goes like this, y'all say. Glorious. Come on. Shout it out and glorious. Make it loud and Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise glow. Oh. See, you are glorious. Hallelujah. You are glorious, Lord. My God, you reign forever and ever. How great your name. Oh, your love remains forever and ever. Say you stay name. Come on, team. Shout it out, shout it out. If you know he's good. Sing it out, sing it out, for the Lord is good. Shout it out loud, you are glorious. Come on, y'all say, glorious. Shout it out and glorious. Make it loud and Come on, y'all say, my God, you reign. Come on, forever and ever, how great. Sing it out, sing it out, for the Lord is good. 
shouted out loud. go to our scripture this morning, Psalms chapter 33. I'll be reading from the NIV. And it says, sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Their starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into the jars. He puts the deep into the storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people uh, of the work Revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Bless the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven, from heavens, sorry, my glasses are messing up here. They're dirty. From heavens, the Lord looks down 
and sees all mankind from his dwelling place to be watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him and those whose hope is in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Amen. 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 Our God is amazing. Our God is awesome. Our God is powerful. Our God is a deliverer. Amen. Hallelujah. You were the word in the beginning. One with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Didn't want heaven without us. Oh, no. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. A sin was raised, the love was raised. What can separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. So what a What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Say, what a wonderful name. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus, my King. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name. The name of Jesus. Yes, it is, Lord. The death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the bowls of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. Say you have no Come on back. 
next day. Death God, won't you the veil toward before you? this morning do you believe that you can call on the name of Jesus and activate the power of the Spirit of God do you believe that you can call on the name of Jesus in your circumstances and God deliver do you believe in the power of the name of Jesus to be saved there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. It's the only name I know where, where, where in religion where people are persecuting you because of the name. You don't have to persecute something that has no power. No significance. There's power in the name of Jesus. A power that we need to walk in, to trust, to hold to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
bless you, Lord. Because you do have a powerful name. Because you are a God that does not fail. You are a God who has knows no defeat. You have a plan and you are working your plan. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You were still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out. Right now, I know you're able. Never lost a battle. 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 Never lost
Think you never will. Think you never will. You never will. You never will. You never will. You can do all. Yes, you can. faithfulness, Lord. We thank you that we can count on you and depend on you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Oh, my God, you are good. You are good, Father God. And we love you this morning. We love you this morning. We say you are wonderful. You are awesome, God. Let's take time just to, just to give God praise this morning, just to worship him this morning with your, your, your mouth. Give it to him with your mouth, not just your clap offering. Give it to him with your mouth. Speak about the goodness of God. Speak about the, the, the wonders of God. Tell him what he means to you this morning. You are wonderful, God. You are faithful, Lord God. God, you are a deliverer. God, you are a light. You are a light to our path. You are a protector, Father God. You are a shield, Heavenly Father. You are a healer, Lord God. You are all-knowing, Father God. And we praise you, Lord God. We praise you, Father God. We praise you, Father God. We praise you, Lord. We give honor to you, Lord. We give thanks to you, Lord. We praise your name. We praise your name because you are worthy. We give you the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You never lost the battle. You never lost a battle. In Psalms 34, David wrote the specific psalm to encourage those who believe. Something happens when you have a relationship with God that you capture his attention. Those who do not know him personally cannot capture his ear. And the scripture is clear in saying that. In Psalms 34, and, and I, I want you to, to listen to these words that he said. Verse 15. The Lord watches over the righteous and listens to their cries, but he opposes those who do evil, so that when they die, they are soon forgotten. That is a hard scripture to swallow. But if you read it carefully, it lets you know what happens when you're walking with him, know him personally, or if you don't know him personally, that you are erased. The righteous call to the Lord and he listens. He rescues them from all their troubles. Not just some, not just the top five or the only two, but he rescues them from all of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who are discouraged and have, and he saves those who have lost all hope. In that passage, you can see clearly the difference of being in him and how he hears your cry 
And if you don't know him, it's silent. So I challenge you this morning for those who know Jesus Christ and knows God to look at the scripture intently and whatever is happening in your life at this very second. The promise is this, he will deliver you from it all. Not just some. Not just one thing. But he delivers you from it all. Gail is here with her daughter, and this is a woman who cried out to the Lord. He heard her cry because she's righteous. Her daughter had a tragic accident where she had brain damage that severely mentally degraded her comprehension level. So she was at her facility, and then one day she became missing for days. But somehow, through the cries of her mother, the righteous one, the Lord set it up for her to have a television interview for a, a broadcast to be put out in Los Angeles to look for her daughter. And immediately someone saw her in the hospital and recognized the picture of the daughter and connected her with the mother to let her I found your daughter. I know where she is. This is what happens when the righteous cry out. He hears you. You have his attention. He does, he's not quiet. He knows that you're going through at the moment, but he's also knowing he's building your faith in him. He wants you to see how much he loves you through the faith and to watch him work in the walk of faith. So whatever you're going through right now, whatever challenge you're having right now, whatever marital challenge you have, whatever financial challenge, whatever children that are gone astray challenge, he hears your cry. And then what he does, he delivers you from all your trouble. Father, right now we have, looking in the back of our mind, we're remembering moments of your faithfulness. Father, we remember those moments when we didn't have any hope. We thought that you have forgotten about us, but you heard our cry. So for those who, Lord, who are on a fence of wondering if he heard me, and they're walking with you, you're hearing them right now in their cry. Father, let their praise and their worship arise within them to understand that my God loves me. He understands. He, has, he is touched by all infirmities from every mankind, and he knows what I'm going through right now, and he's going to deliver me from this. I'm believing in faith that he's going to deliver me, so I will praise him right now for what's about to come. So, Father, I thank you right now that you're developing that hope right now for those who are distraught, who are wondering what to do. The challenges are before them. But through this scripture, the psalmist, he hears the cry. And Lord, we can say, we never lost the battle. Can you sing that one more time? <laughs> the verse to the chorus. There's something to these words. When he was singing these words, I thought about, it. you can do all things but fail. Here it comes when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your At the tomb of every Lazarus, your walk be out. So I know you're able, my No, you never lost a battle. And I know, I know, you never will. You can do, you can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Because you never lost a battle. 
know you never lost a battle and I know I know you never will say so you never lost you never lost a battle 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 and you never will say you never lost a battle never lost a battle never lost a battle and you never will say you never will you never will oh you never will you can do all things you can do all things but fail cause you never lost a battle no you never lost a battle and I know I know I will know, say I know, and I know, I know, you never, one more time, say and I know, and I know, I know, you never will, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, lift your voice and give thanks to the Lord for winning the battle, hallelujah, thank you Lord, bless your wonderful name, you may be seated. Thank, thank you, minstrels and psalmists. Whenever I have a chance, I will give thanks to this wonderful praise and worship team that serves God from their heart, and they sing from their passion. It's not a job, it's what they live. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you're encouraged today with the worship. For those of you who are listening, understand this, that relationship with Jesus Christ matters. It's important, it's relative, it brings life, even through these dark times. Know that the Lord hears your cry when you call his name. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, just take a moment and say, Lord, I repent. Forgive me for my sins. I want you in my life so I can understand what it means to walk in victory in knowing you. That's simple. And the Lord would immediately, through the sincerity of your heart, will come into your life. If you need someone to talk to, just call the number on the, uh, it's not on the screen, but 847-662-1380 or sign on the dove.org and someone will reach out to you to help you walk this life to know him. Our mission here at this church is to develop disciples of Christ. To see people win in victory in knowing him personally. So, young people, how many here are 3 to 11? Raise your hand. 3 through 11. All right, it's time for you to go. <laughs> go downstairs to the children's ministry. <laughs> Amen. This past couple of weeks, we've been listening to a series in James. James is a powerful message to the church. And sometimes you have corns and bunions that are going to hurt because of the truth that comes from that word. And as the pastors have been sharing and teaching, I can say clearly and emphatically, they've been slapping me upside my head with the truth of God. And I want you to know this. This is for the equipping of you to become better believers. So that it will not be a disgrace when you say that you're a Christian and people look at your life and say, oh, no, you're not. So as you listen to the word today being given by Pastor Corey, listen intently for change. Look at the mirror of truth to see where does this apply to me. And trust me, the Holy Ghost will say, yeah, that's you. You need to get this. So I'm going to ask Pastor Corey Ratliff to come on up and give us the word. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Minister Marcos. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why don't you give the Lord a high praise? Give him a high praise. Come on, clap your hands and give him high praise. Come on, somebody, clap your hands and give him high praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I'm excited to be with you this morning. Hallelujah. Um, it, it's interesting now that we're sitting in the front. I can't see people when they come in. So, I'm, I'm, so it's good to see you when I turn around and look. Amen. Y'all look beautiful. Amen. Praise God. Bless you. Somebody say, I know, I know. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you all and 
praise God for all that he has done. Uh, we are so excited and blessed to be here. I know it's cold this morning, and so God bless you. Uh, we're going to make sure that everything gets turned on well uh, for next week, praise the Lord. So we just didn't have time for it to get kicked on this morning. Amen. But it's all good. Can I just tell you something that uh, we are family, and not everything comes in a perfect package? I, can I just tell the truth? Not everything comes in a perfect package. You know, and sometimes we look at church and we've got to have church to be a perfect package. And if it wasn't a perfect package, we didn't have church. Somebody say, the devil is alive. <laughs> because the thing is, we, we, where Jesus is, that's where I want to be. Hallelujah. I want to be where his presence is. Hallelujah. And so we're going to be uh, definitely calling on the Lord today. Definitely going to be looking into his word. I bless you, those that are visiting, those that are, that you are, uh, that are online with us. Thank you all for being here today. Um, we're going to be continuing on in our study of James. It has been very powerful. Last week, Pastor Jason came and just whooped us real good. Come on, somebody. I mean, it, it was a good spanking. And uh, I praise the Lord for just his, his, uh, his passion and everything that he gave and that he poured out. Amen. So hallelujah. Uh, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and read chapter 2 because that's where we're going to be. We're going to read chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. I want to read that. And then after that, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to get into this. And it's not going to be long today, okay? But it's going to be powerful. Amen? And I hope you're ready to receive. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep looking around because I definitely want to see y'all today. Hallelujah. I want to see y'all. Praise the Lord. Good to see you. Amen. God bless you. Good. So, James chapter 2, let's read verses 1 through 13. And I'm reading from the New American Standard Version, and it reads as such. My brethren, do not hold your faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ with an attitude of personal favoritism. For if a man comes into your assembly with a gold ring and dressed in fine clothes, and there also comes in a poor man in dirty clothes, and you pay special attention to the one who is wearing the fine clothes and say, yes, you sit here in a good place, and you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down by my footstool. Have you not made distinctions amongst yourselves and become judges with evil motives. Listen, my brethren, beloved brethren, did not God choose the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Is it not the rich who oppresses you and, and personally drag you into court? Do they not blaspheme the fair name by which you have been called? If, however, you are fulfilling the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he has become guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not commit murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery but do commit murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be merciless to one who has shown no mercy, for mercy triumphs over judgment. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Whoo, Jesus, my God. Father, we just bless you this morning. We thank you that you are good. Thank you for this word that you have given us today. Father, we pray, Lord God, that it will fall upon good ground, O oh God. Hallelujah. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would move by your spirit Help us to hear what you are saying to the church. In Jesus' name, and somebody said, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, look, I know even as we set this up, it's just like, woo, that is, uh, that's rough. That's tough. Can I tell you, in preparing it, I felt that same way. In preparing it, I felt like, uh, 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 uh. I'm like, my goodness, okay, just beating me up. Because it's dealing with being partial. 
Okay, and, and, and when you talk about being partial, sometimes we sit in a situation where it's just like, oh, that, it's not referring to me. I'm okay. But honestly, when you start digging into the word more and more, you start to realize I do have some moments of partiality in me. There are times when there are people that I just don't want to be around. There are some times that, that, oh, that person talks too much. Ugh, I hope they don't come see me today. That person always got a story. Ooh, let me see if I can avoid them. Partiality. <laughs> so the title of this message is the title that's in my Bible, The Sin of Partiality. I couldn't even put any other spin on it. It just is what it is. The sin of of partiality. I have to write off of what Pastor Jason gave us last week. He gave us, you know, uh, James 1, verse 26 through 27. I want to put that on the screen. And, uh, and if we read that, it says, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Now, he gave us three T's that he brought out of that. He talked about the tongue, he talked about the treatment of others, and he talked about your testimony. So he gave us those three T's, and I was like, whoa, we need to definitely take a look at that. Because sometimes our tongue gets us in trouble. Because when we start running off at the mouth, see, the scripture also says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So sometimes things that's going on in our heart, we end up saying stuff that ends up hurting folk. My God, a little quiet in here. Sometimes we just got to watch that tongue. Sometimes things don't need to be said. But then he gave us the other T, which was the treatment of others. Sometimes, you know, and, and, uh, when we go into restaurants and sometimes they don't do what we want them to do, it's amazing how we start treating them wrong. Good, dear Christian folk. I know it's quiet. I know it's quiet. We get an attitude when they don't give us what we need. We get an attitude when the service is not appropriate. And so all of a sudden we start treating them wrong. Okay? The treatment of others. Watch your tongue. Watch how you treat others. And then the next thing was your testimony. Keeping your testimony intact, making sure that you're not the one that is, uh, is in the wrong. But then uh, James goes ahead and he gives us chapter 2 as an example of what he's talking about. So he lays it out. Let's deal with partiality. You know, there's a vision of, of, of the greatest thing that has happened is since the church of Jesus Christ. The greatest thing that has happened that, that, that showed up uh, in, in, in church history, and that is the fact that Jesus came and he brought unity. That is the most amazing thing that could have ever happened uh, amongst religiosity, amongst the old world, is that we were brought together as one. This is the first time in history ever that people of the same color, no matter what your economic status, no matter what your race, no matter whatever, you were able to come into one space and be loved. Had never happened before. Remember, it was always separate. Greeks were not allowed to come into the temple. It was always separate. It was always them and, and, and those people. And all. But when Jesus came, he canceled all of that. When Jesus came, he said, everybody is welcome at the table. The gospel enabled everybody to be able to come in. Everybody, no matter what your economic status, no matter what your race, no matter what your gender, you are all welcome at the table. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 1. James 2, verse 1, it says, My brethren, do not hold your faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ with an attitude of personal favoritism. I wanted to put the amplified version in there too. It says, My fellow believers, do not practice your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, glorious Lord Jesus Christ, with an attitude of partiality. Look at it. Towards people show no favoritism, no prejudice, no snobbery. My God. You know, you can walk up into some meetings, and, and you can just sense the snobbery. 
You, you can walk into some places where you can sense that you are not welcome. And sometimes even if you're on a race level, you can experience that. I remember I was at a, a Christian conference. We were at our, a marriage Christian conference, and I told this story before, but I got really convicted, you know, because I, I was there, and, and everybody, quote, unquote, is a believer, but we were trying to get on the elevator, right? And, uh, and so me and my wife, we were standing at the elevator, and as soon as the elevator doors opened, uh, it was a whole bunch of people of the lighter hue and no one that looked like me. And something triggered inside of me that I don't want to get on that elevator. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that they did anything. But it was a trigger that I didn't want to get on the elevator. My wife was kind of surprised. It's like, yeah, you know, I've never known you to have an issue like that. But it was a trigger. And I got really convicted. Because we're all the body. Why couldn't I have just taken authority and be like, hey, what's up, y'all? Space on the elevator? I could have just been like that. But whatever reason, I passed it up and said, I'll get on the next one. Partiality. It's not that anything was wrong. But there was something that was triggered inside of me. And God's saying, we have to deal with this in all of us. Partiality is inconsistent with the faith and who God is. It's inconsistent. That's point number one for those of you all taking notes. Partiality is inconsistent with the faith and who God is. When Jesus came on the scene, he came and he made a sacrifice for all. He made a sacrifice for all. Go to Galatians 3, verse 28. Praise God. He made a sacrifice for all. And he says in Galatians 3, verse 28, it says here, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. For whatever reason, though, when, we, when it comes to the body of Christ, we want to keep those divisions there. But God says, when I sent my son, I sent him so that all of us could become one. I know this is not going to be popular with some people today because there are people that have been hurt. I get it. But we also got to understand that this is not supposed to be a part of the body of Christ. This This type of partiality is not supposed to be us because it's directly opposed to who God is. God says we're supposed to be one. He proclaimed it. That's why I sent my son, that we would all be one in Christ. Hallelujah. This is who Christ is. Everybody was welcome. The prostitute was welcome. The lame was welcome. He allowed these people into our space. I don't know, sometimes in Christendom, Christendom we, we, we want the perfect package. We, we, we want the perfect package to come near us. You know, I, I can even, you know, sometimes we, we even make up our groups and things, and it's just like I only want people that are like me in my group. Sometimes we get upset when, when, and when it's time to put people in different groups, and it's like, oh, don't put me with that person. Ushers, don't seat me over there. Or when it's time to choose small group, oh, who's in that group? Can you tell me the names of the people that are in that small group so I know if I want to choose to be a part of it? This is not who Jesus is. Jesus said everyone was welcome at the table. Come all you who are weary. And heavy laden. He said, and I will give you rest. He said, all of you who are weary and heavy laden. Let me tell you something. Weariness, it knows no color. It knows no color. Weariness, it knows no gender. Everybody can become weary and tired. See, my acceptance was based on his love. 
Because <laughs> I'm messed up. Can anybody else testify about yourself? You don't have to testify about that, what you know about me. Testify about yourself. I know I'm messed up. And it took the love of Jesus Christ for me to be welcomed in. Because some of you, if you would have known me, you wouldn't have wanted to have anything to do with me. But I was broken. And in my brokenness, Jesus said, come. It didn't matter what I had done. It didn't matter what my past had looked like. Jesus said, come. No matter what you're going through, even for us, all of us here in this room, he says, come. No matter what your status may be, it doesn't matter what happened. If you did something with the money, if you did something like this, he still says, come. Because that's who he is. His love is available to every single person. I have to give this out because we act like it's not available to certain individuals. We act like the love valve is shut off to certain people that act like this or look like that. So the love valve gets closed. Because that type of group of people, they offended me. I'm going to close the love valve. So whenever that type of group of people come around, I'm closing the love valve because I was offended years ago. I'm closing the love valve. And even though we're supposed to be brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, my valve is still closed. You can't have none. This is a touchy issue. And it started to reveal itself more and more as racial stuff started happening out in the world. It started to really impact the church that there is still partiality in the church. That we end up shutting off the love valve. But the love was available to you. The love accepted you. The love is still accepting you. So why would we shut it off if it's not being shut off to us? His love is available to us all. My acceptance was based upon his love. In this verse number one, it talks about our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. I, I was it's just... Uh, I was wrestling with, well, why, why do you make a distinction here of our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? And it's because Jesus is everything. He is the, the glory belongs to him. And so when we're operating in partiality, we're actually making the thing about us. So in other words, this becomes about my glory at somebody else's expense. In other words, hey, I've been hurt, I've been offended, I don't like you. And I'm going to let you know in the house of God. No, you can't come to my group. <laughs> it becomes about me. We make it about ourselves when we start acting in this way. And we're stealing the glory that belongs to the Lord. The glory belongs to the Lord, not to us. This is not an easy thing to talk about because at some point all of us have been guilty of this. The glory belongs to the Lord. Sometimes we're even doing this out of fear. Sometimes we're, we're afraid, and so instead of trusting God to handle our fears, we take things into our own hands, okay? So I don't want to be hurt anymore, so therefore I won't go to that group over there because I don't want to be hurt. And so instead of trusting the Lord to do the healing that needs to be done, we actually end up taking it on ourselves. So we put our own safeguards in place. We put our own safeguards that, that, that it's just like, God, your, 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 your love was good enough to save me, but it's not good enough for me to be able to interact with others. And so, therefore, our Christianity becomes real dull. It becomes real shallow because we're not interacting with the rest of the body. 
and our fears have kept us in a hole. So the law of freedom is in, isn't impacting us because we put ourselves in bondage. We put ourselves in bondage to our own fears. And I get it. We're protecting ourselves. You know, when I didn't want to get on that elevator, I was just like, yeah, that was a form of protection for me. I was protecting myself. There was some type of trigger that happened, and I was protecting myself. But I could have just also got on that elevator and just been like, hey, what's up, everybody? Praise the Lord on this good morning. Hope y'all are doing well. And on the flip side, all those people on that elevator could have just been like, hey, brother. Welcome this morning. Come on in the elevator. <laughs> I'm just saying it works both ways. Because if we are the body, we should be able to see one another. Help me, Jesus. If we are the body, we should be able to see one another. I'm making a proclamation. December is the I see you and I love you month. And I, I want everybody to honor that. Okay? Okay. Somebody in the body, in fact, take time right now. I want you to just look around, look around, just look around, okay? Look around at the various people that are here, okay? Online, I know you can't do that, but at least you can see me. But I'm making the proclamation that this is I see you and I love you month. And I want you to do something about that. I want you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you do something about that. Whether it's because it was Pastor's Appreciation Month in October, and we were blessed, and God, thank you, you know, bless, bless you for all that you did. But what about one another? So December is I see you and I love you month. So whatever the Holy Spirit sp stirs up inside of you to do for somebody else this month, I want you to do it. Send them a letter, send them a gift card, do all the different things that you did for your pastors. Now I want you to do it for one another. I see you and I love you month. Because partiality says I don't see you. You might be in my presence, but I really don't see you. Dramatic pause for you to be seen. That's all. But they was looking at me like, what you going to say? <laughs> but honestly, I, I just felt that. I'm like, you are to be seen. Because people in the world right now want to be seen. They're doing things to be seen. They're doing things all on social media to be seen. I mean, a website where you can just take off your clothes and show people your body. Oh, y'all didn't know? Oh, yeah. What's the name of the site? <laughs> but websites where it's just like you can make money just for showing off your body. They want to be seen. And in the body of Christ, if we, if we are setting ourselves apart so that we don't be apart, or if we're made to feel that we're not apart, we're not being seen. And so we're going to do things to hurt people. And we're going to do things to hurt ourselves. We're going to isolate ourselves when the body says, no, you need one another. The body of Christ. It's supposed to be about his glory, the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2 through verse 4, it gives us an example of what he's talking about. It says, if a man enters your church wearing an expensive suit and a street person wearing rags comes in right after him and you say to the man in the suit, sit here, sir, this is the best seat in the house, and either ignore the street person or say, better sit here in the back row. Haven't you segregated God's children and proved that you are judges who can't be trusted? That's the message translation. Now, 
the thing is, it, it's not just church. It's not just the physical location. How about taking them out for coffee? Taking them out to lunch? It's like, ooh, that person looks good. So you're looking at the outer appearance. Oh, that person looks good. Let me go ahead and take them out to lunch because it might benefit me. Now, guess what? That's a worldly practice. Because I want to get over. So let me take you out to lunch because it'll give me favor. Better my business. Better my opportunity. But it's not supposed to be that way in the body of Christ. When you see someone, the Holy Spirit will ignite you to do something. Take them out to lunch. Take them out for coffee. You know, you see one of these young people, they're beautiful young people. Take them out. Take some time. One of y'all, I owe lunch. Okay, I got you, Lord. I, hey, I knew, I knew. She's like, yep, come on, it's me. But honestly, if you're taking time to see people, there won't be that partiality. It won't be this, this place where you're operating for ill motives. It'll be this place where, God, I, you know the motives of my heart. You're running my heart. You're running my motives. And so I'm going to act from that place of you being in me where I'm not going to make these partialities. Hallelujah. That's the same thing that happened uh, with um, when they were choosing uh, David, King David, to be king, to anoint him. Samuel went through all the brothers, and he said, surely it's the firstborn. He got all the muscles, got the tight abs. You know, it must be him. And God was like, push on. It's not. Okay, it must be this one. He looks studious. He got a tight haircut. It must be him. Push on. And he went through all the brothers, and he's just like, is there anyone else? And they said, well, there's the rugged son. He's out in the fields. Go get him. And they bring the rugged son in, and God says, this is the one. Anoint this one. Anoint this one because he has my heart. It takes us into this next passage in, in verses 5 through 7. It says, listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him? But do you have dishonored the poor man? Is it not the rich who oppress you and personally drag you into courts? Do they, uh, do they not blaspheme the good name by which you have been called? He says, look, it's the poor who are in need. It's the poor who are going to be rich. And it's not that he's talking about the, the uh, economically poor. He's talking about the poor in spirit. If a rich person comes up in this place, I don't know what we're going to define as rich, but we'll do what the scripture is. Maybe he's got some ring or something. Sometimes, you know, if fancy people come up in here, you know, and this might be an attitude of partiality even in me. I'd be like, go sit down with your your gold and your stuff. Don't we do that sometimes? We be the first one to be like, who this coming up in here? Come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. But see, even that person that comes in here with all the gold and everything, you don't know the broken state that they're in. And if we make a judgment call just based upon what they, dress, what they dress like, we're going to miss the heart of God. Because we don't know their heart, but God knows their heart. Even the one that comes in here not dressed as well. God knows their heart and God knows why they've been sent here. Okay, but that's the house of God. How about your house? How about your home? Are they welcome in your home? Because it's okay if we at the church house, look, y'all can be here all day long. That's great. As long as y'all don't come to my house, we all right. It gets personal when it starts getting to the house. But see, God says, no, I want you guys to be like it was in Acts. Let me read Acts 2. 
Acts 2, verse 47, verse 42 through 47, actually. We've read this many times here, okay? Here we go. Glasses, please. Verse 42, it says, They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. 43, everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. 44, and all those who had believed were together and had all things in common, and they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Imagine what would happen if we actually did that. The, the body of Christ would be added to day by day if we were able to be in a place where it's just like, yeah, you are welcome at the table. You are welcome at the table. You are welcome at the table. Come on by. Get a meal. Let's pray. Let's be in awe of God's wonders. My wife, she made a statement about uh, the Allots program and the Allots show. Now, as you know, those of you that have seen the Allot shows, you know we've got all types that are on the stage. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise him. But she made this statement. It's amazing that there is one space that people are welcome to. No matter what their skill level, they're able to come into this one space and be loved. See, coming from the dance world, it's very competitive. And sometimes, because of your skill level, you're not even welcome. Don't even bother coming to the threshold. Because your skill level is not there. But what happened with Alats, what she noted, is that we praise God for the ministry that welcomes them all. No matter what your skill level, we're going to do something with you. Praise the Lord. But guess what? It takes work to do that. Just like it takes work for us to be as one. It takes work. It takes rubbing up against each other. It takes sometimes being offended and sometimes just, just not even worried about the offense. It takes us being able to work together. And, and, and see, this is one of the things that keeps that partiality up. We get offended and we don't tell the person who offended us. We don't go talk to them. So we don't, so we don't do what the Bible says to do. If you are in offense, go to the person. And it's not that you're going to the person because, look, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. That's not it. I want to be in unity because Jesus says we're supposed to be one. There's an offense that has happened, and so I would like to talk to you about the offense so that we can continue being one. That's if you're interested in what Jesus wants. That is if, if you're interested in practicing the faith. Because the faith is about unity. And if we're interested in what Jesus wants, then we'll do what needs to be done to be one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Hallelujah. In the next part of these passages, he just really keeps on pressing in the argument. Partiality is an act of sin. James 2, verse 8 through 11. If, however, you are fulfilling the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. 
But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and convicted by the law as violators. For whoever keeps the whole law yet stumbles in one point has become guilty of all. For he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery but do commit murder, you have become a violator of the law. The royal law is Jesus. Jesus said he came to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill the law. So to be in Jesus, you actually fulfill it. So when I'm not acting right, when I'm having these issues with trying to be with other people, I'm actually not reflecting Jesus. We need to be reflecting Jesus, and then that fulfills the royal law. Love your neighbor as yourself. The fulfillment is Jesus. Some of you say, it's too hard, Pastor. You don't, you don't understand the, the trials I went through. It's too hard. That's why you give it over to Jesus. That's why you work through it through Jesus. And if it's really seriously hard, you get with somebody else to help you. That's what the body's for. Come together so that we might become more and more like Jesus. I came to him broken. I don't want to bring more broken stuff into these other relationships. Help me, Jesus. I want to become more and more like him. To be more and more like him. To, to love like him. So when I'm not acting like him, it's a, it's a commitment against the royal law. And some of these people were saying, well, it's not that bad. I only committed a little sin. I'm entitled. You don't know what I've been through. I'm entitled to act like this. No, you're not. It's not like Christ. We got to let it go. We got to let it go. I want to see God add to the numbers. I want to see God add to the body, just like they did in Acts. We got to be operating in this royal law. Jesus is the fulfillment of that royal law. The next part is James 2, chapter, verse 12 through 13, and I'm done after this. Partiality provokes God's judgment. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of freedom. For judgment will be merciless to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. I remember when Pastor Luke McFadden came and he spoke about mercy being messy. He said sometimes we like the concept of being merciful, but we don't actually like doing mercy. It's like it's a philosophy, you know, to treat others right. It's a philosophy to act right. But when we actually get down to it, we actually don't want to do it. Mercy is messy. Any of you that have difficult children can understand mercy is messy because you got to be merciful, showing that love. And that same love has to be extended to one another. So James tells us, so speak and so act as those who are to be judged. You're going to be judged by this freedom that you have. You have freedom in Christ. You're going to be judged by that. He's going to hold you to the standard of Jesus. He says, this is the standard. I gave you the perfect standard, and that perfect law of freedom is Jesus. When you accepted Jesus, you came into this place of freedom, and you're going to be judged by that place. You are free to love. <laughs> you are free to forgive. So act and so speak in that way. He talks about mercy. He said it's going to be merciless to the one that doesn't do this. For mercy triumphs over judgment. But God is so serious about this. He said it will be merciless to the one that does not act in this way. Zechariah 7, verse 9 through 7 says, This is what the Lord Almighty says. 
administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor. In your hearts, do not think evil of each other. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Now, I know this is not one of those fire and brimstone type messages, but it was one of those messages that truly brought conviction in my heart that I would see people, that I would see them and love them. Some of us are here today and and we don't know who Jesus is. Some of us are here today and we have not received that love that embraces us and welcomes us at the table. And I want you to know that Jesus is available to you. Minister Marcos already talked about it. He already talked about it today, that Jesus is available to you. Jesus is the son of the living God. He is the one who is the mediator between God and man. He's the one that makes everything right between God and humanity. He sets everything right. He was made as a sacrifice so that man could come back into relationship with God. If you don't have that today, we want to pray with you so that you can receive Jesus as your Savior. The whole point is Jesus. He is the one that actually sees deep in our hearts and knows what's going on in our hearts. He knows what we're wrestling with even now. If you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, would you just raise your hand? I want to receive Jesus as my Savior. I believe who he is. I believe that he is the Son of the living God. I believe that he was raised from the dead. I want to give my life to him today. There might be those of you online that you're saying, I received Jesus as my Savior. I want you to just let us know in the chat. You can also write us in an email, a message, and just let us know so that we might reach out to you and pray with you. There are those of us today that even as I've been preaching through the message, you've been thinking through the the many situations where there were encounters where you acted out in partiality. There are times when you've had an attitude against somebody else, whether it was because of their race or whether it was because of their gender or whether it was because of their economic status. And I just ask that you would just begin to just ask the Lord for forgiveness. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. Repent of this because it didn't look like you, Jesus. So, Father, all across this room, Lord God, we we ask, Lord God, that you would search our hearts. Help us to deal with this place, Lord God, of of partiality, Lord God. Help us to deal with this place, Lord God, where where we have uh, just just been prejudiced, where we have just just made uh, statements or done things, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for, for us not opening the valve of love to others, Lord God, and and, and many times just operating in fear, Lord God, sometimes because of how we've been hurt. Father, we give it all over to you. We want to look more and more like you. Father, some of us may be holding on to some different things, Lord God, that have been some protective mechanisms. Father, some of us have been ultra-sensitive, Lord God, and, 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 and we get set off in a heartbeat, Lord God, because of various offenses. And Father, I'm asking, Lord God, that we would give it over to you. Nothing is too difficult for you. Father, we sang about it today. Father, help us to have a heart that will love, that will see, that will love our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Father, we thank you that you have been merciful to us. In every situation, you have met us. When we've disappointed you, you met us. You invited us back into your presence. 
So, Father, may we carry that same mantle. May we carry that same mantle of love for others. Continue to open our eyes, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Before I go, don't forget that this is I See You and I Love You Month. I would love for there to be testimonies after testimonies of how you have received, been on the receiving end of somebody else's expression of love. I would love to hear testimonies of how you have imparted something to somebody else in the body of Christ that expressed that I see you and I love you. I remember when there were comments about Apostle Harry, uh, people would always say that he made me feel seen. How about you? Do that with one another. Lisa, when I'm in your presence, that I make you feel seen. Felicia, when I'm in your presence, I make you feel seen. Levita, when you are in other people's presence, you make people feel seen. There's a level of love that God wants us to come into where it looks like Jesus. I want you to know, I see you and I love you. James, I see you and I love you, man. Hallelujah. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands before the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pastor Corey, we thank you and we appreciate that challenge from James to us this morning. And as we've been saying this series, it's, it's, it's for us to, to talk about it, but not even just to leave it there, but to be about it as well. Amen. And so... I pray that we've received and that we are encouraged and challenged to, to put this into practice in our lives. So thank you for that, Pastor Corey. We appreciate you. We see you and we love you too. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Before we close service this morning, let me just uh, make you aware of some things happening in, in the coming month, which apparently is now I See You and I Love You month. So that is, that is uh, December. If you see that out there, it started with Pastor Corey, so don't let them steal his idea. But we are going to honor that. Um, one thing that we do want to make you aware of in December, and this is an, an, an invitation to all the ladies that are a part of the Sign of Dove or just other ladies that you'd want to know and invite on behalf of Just Be Women's Ministry. They want to invite you to come out on the 19th of December and stick around after service. So we'll uh, right after service in the lower level, they're going to have a, a Christmas party where they want you to bring some cookies to exchange and to bring a gift of up to $10 to be able to exchange with one another. So you'll have a time for a little bit of food and some fellowship and just exchanging some, some of your, cook, your homemade cookies, hopefully. I guess I shouldn't say they don't have to be homemade, but... I don't know if the men are eating them, but maybe I guess I shouldn't put, I put my preference in there. I'm partial to homemade cookies, but uh, forgive me, Lord. Buy, buy them from the store if you have to. Not everybody have that gift, but just bring cookies, bring a gift, a small gift to exchange. All right, I, I won't say anything more on that. Otherwise, um, I want you just to be aware of kind of the schedule through December as we're getting ready to enter that month. We will still be here every Sunday. Um, Christmas is, I think, on a Saturday this year, so we'll have kind of the 19th will be more of our sort of Christmas service, if you will, and we want to encourage you to invite others and bring some friends and families and let them know that they're seen and loved on that day. We'll kind of have a more of the a presentation of the story of the gospel on that day, and then the 26th we'll be back here uh, on that Sunday as well to celebrate and kind of wrap up the year and reflect and share some testimonies of what God is doing. And then we are going to have our traditional New Year's Eve service. Uh, we might do a few things a little bit differently, but we'll have more of that to share with you soon. But we are going to be here on New Year's Eve. So just kind of save that time in your mind that if you're thinking about what you're going to do that night, we'd love to have you join us 
and celebrate uh, and pray and worship into the new year together as a family here at the Sign of the Dove. So that will be happening. Praise God. So that just to, wanted to make sure you're aware of that, and then we'll kick off the new year uh, with our first fruits consecration. So another uh, powerful way to start the year in fasting and praying for uh, the, that Monday, first Monday through Friday of the new year. So that is in the plans as well. I know it seems kind of crazy to think that we're almost into January, but the truth is we are. So let's get ourselves ready to, to wrap up this year well and to begin a new year in the Lord together. Amen. And the final thing I want to say is just a uh, continued reminder to to stay faithful and stay generous in your giving. We appreciate you. so many of you have been doing that. As we think about all that we have been great, all that we're grateful for and all that we're thankful for, let's make sure we continue to show God our gratitude and to honor him in our giving. So as you leave here in the sanctuary, there are ba- there's a basket in the back you can give your tithes, your offerings, your gifts to. Uh, if you're doing it electronically, you can do that through the website at the sign of dove.org directly through PayPal or through our cash app, which is T-S-O-D-W-K. Just want to bring that up and just remind us to continue to be generous to the Lord even this time where we're starting to think about doing things for others as well even more. Praise the God. Well, let's stand to our feet and close out our time here in a word of prayer and benediction. Father, we thank you for your blessing of your presence today. We thank you for the time that we're able to spend together to be able to worship you, to be able to be encouraged and challenged by your word. And I just pray now, Lord, that as we go, that that which you have put in us today would, would, would find that solid ground in our hearts and would take root and it would produce the fruit in our lives where by your strength and by your love, we would be able to replicate that and, and see others and love others. And we would not discriminate. We would, God, you would break down those those areas of prejudice in our hearts and in our minds, God, and you would allow us to love the way you love and to live in the way that you've lived and that we would be a light, God, to those around us. Watch over us, we ask, Lord. Continue to protect us until we meet again or until you return. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Greet one another and enjoy this day together.